Uh, what do you think about the new bands? Um, the, the new punk bands, firstly. Uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> you're pondering. Well, we don't know who you mean. Well, um, I, I'm talking about bands who now in 1984 are maybe doing what the punk bands of 1976-77 were doing. Of course they're not. It's well, completely different circumstances. Mu musically, would you not agree that a lot of them are copying that? Yes, but that's got nothing to do with uh, them capturing anything, really. Um, what I'm getting at is, is what... Yes, well, well, what a lot of people try and... Try and uh, get at is that well you used to call yourselves a punk band so why don't you anymore and the truth of the matter is if anyone um followed us from early on was that we never called ourselves a punk group and there were a lot of groups that have fizzled out but they were really good like the subway sect or whatever that didn't call themselves punk groups and uh uh for the reason that uh, it, it was just like, I mean, no no one wanted, everyone, I think a lot of groups around them wanted a separate identity and, uh, and it was nothing to do with calling yourself a punk group or an R&B group or a rock and roll group or whatever. And um, I think it's another old myth that is trapping a lot of people and they're calling themselves a punk group. What is punk? I don't, I don't know. know. I mean, people said you're punk, and... I always thought punk meant a sort of mid-1960s American garage group, something like that. Or the Ramones, or something like oh. that. But, um... Or the New York Dolls, but it's something, a term that was used by some very hip journalists who wanted some tag to put along some this commodity that I did, they didn't know what to do with that was obviously happening and uh it's very obvious that's that's why it makes me laugh when people compare us to lasting as long as a stupid group like the dam because they started off wearing this um tag around their necks and it's been that ever since uh, what do you look for in a support band um someone that we like Hopefully, and we like the flower pot men. Oh, you say you like, I mean, you personally enjoy their music, therefore they will be the support band, yeah? yeah. Simple as that. Mm. Simple as that. What about America for Susie and the Banshees? Have you, have you toured America? Have you been to Yeah, we've been yeah. twice before. No one knows about it, but we have been there. <laughs> and what was the reaction? It was. It was good. Wonderful, but, um. We're, we're too lazy to. Not lazy, I suppose, just um, we don't want to clock in and clock out and conquer America, which you have to do if you're going to crack it. As uh, Well, a lot of groups have to go over there to live and tour around for 18 months or whatever. And I just don't think that's fun at all. I think in the circumstances that arise when we lose guitarists, and things like that <laughs> have inevitably, inevitably meant that um, America has always suffered because um, the first time we were supposed to go there was when John and Kenny left and we haven't been there for, we're, we're going next month but we haven't been there for two and a half years mainly because McGeoch sort of fell over and uh, we've been taking it bit by bit but, um, but we're starting off with uh, Independence Day in San Francisco. What, what's your view of America? I think it's fun in a superficial way, and I enjoy it, I enjoy it in a superficial way, in, in that I'm visiting it. Um, it helps if you know some uh, people there that you get on with. And there's a few friends that I've got there that aren't obviously typically American that... Mm. How's the current tour going? Um, Given that you've got the, uh, well, maybe not a problem, but... Uh, well, we're only four four concerts into it. Um, it's getting better every night because, uh, obviously, John needs to get... has only had ten days rehearsal with us. Sure. And uh, he's 
Um, I think both us and the audience are getting used to it. Do you enjoy touring? I mean, do you enjoy live work? Yeah. Mm. That awful question of do you enjoy live work? We like the hour. Work? We like the hour and a quarter that we're on stage. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah, the, the travelling and the waiting. And, never and any getting lost in Birmingham. And <laughs> <laughs> what, sort of, what sort of people come to the gigs, fashion-wise? What I'm getting at is, do you still get the pogoing and the gobbing and... Um, not so, hardly any spitting at all. Um, they seem... Woe be tired if they do. Yeah, woe be tired <laughs> if they do. Um, they seem to be getting younger still, for some reason. Well, the pe you only really see the sort of first ten rows anyway. And, uh... Are they, are they well behaved? I mean, oh, you say rows. They enjoy themselves. I don't know what... The, you mean by well behaved? Well, what I mean is you're not loud enough. Or audio wise, audible, audible, mm. audibly. It's getting used to playing in uh, seated venues again. We haven't done it for a couple of years, and it's, it's quite a strange transition. Having played in um, sort of tents and things in Italy and stuff like that. So that's as much as us getting used to it as them um, hearing right. some new songs. Well, I wish you well with the tour. Oh. We must say hello to our man. And Billy's behaving himself very well on the tour. <laughs> What's this about? <laughs> this wonderful mother of this wonderful son of hers, Ma'am Holston. Yeah. Fine. <laughs>